Ferrari is close to signing Joe as a reserve driver, and it seems like it makes the most sense given the value that this driver has in his country, both on and off the sport. The numbers for Ferrari are not exactly great in China, and while they do need an F1 driver with experience to test out the car in the simulator and do his duties, there is much more behind this interest in Ferrari. So the question is, can they sign Joe as early as possible and reunite after the 2018 split-up? And if so, can it lead to Zhou finding a permanent seat elsewhere? There's no question about it, Zhou's future in Formula 1 is under a huge question mark, and whether we like it or not, teams have better opportunities to sign than Zhou. But there is a massive factor here that he brings to the table that the majority of the grid doesn't, and that is the money through sponsorship. If Ferrari is set to bring Joe back into their team after he was part of their academy from 2014 to 2018, before going to Alpine and then into Formula 1, they are very likely to receive the finances that Kick Sauber received from Joe's sponsorships, estimated around $30 million. And make no mistakes, $30 million is a lot of money that can be used properly in terms of developing the car and spending more quality time on the upgrades as well as the overall performance of the car. On top of that, the team will be receiving a driver with a proper F1 experience, unlike other teams who usually have F2 or sometimes even F3 drivers as reserves. So the fact that Mercedes are now chasing Bottas to secure his seat is also showing how much trust the teams have in their reserve drivers to turn things around behind closed curtains. When talking about his future, Joe is adamant that other series don't even come to mind to him right now, and the most important thing for him is to stay in Formula 1. Furthermore, he went on to say, At the moment, I don't want to be in other series yet, because I feel like I'm still in a period that if I can stay in Formula 1 or make a comeback if I don't have a seat, there will be chances to show what I've got. As of now, Ferrari's been denying the rumours of talking to Joe and bringing him to the team, but it's obvious that they're not going to reveal their cards right away. There's a lot to gain for them outside of the track and the sport as well, because we must not forget the magnitude that Ferrari has as a brand outside of the Formula 1 world. There's no doubt that this is the rocky road that every driver is being sacked from the current grid will have to walk on, with the current difference that some have utilities that others don't, and this is where Zhou bodes better than Schumacher for comparison. What's going heavily in his direction is the fact that Ferrari's notched a significant fall in their shares in China as well as in their vehicle sales. So while this percentage was a bit lower in 2023 standing at 4, it was significantly increased in 2024, currently standing at 25%. The demand in China for electric cars has increased, and if Ferrari can use Zhou's F1 campaign to battle through these tough times, it will be safe to say that they're going to receive two massive assets in their favour an experienced F1 driver as a reserve and a greater share market in China, which could be further bolstered if Zhou is given commercial duties as well. And what we must not forget is that apart from what we're seeing right now from Zhou, he has joined an elite club of rookies scoring a point on their debut, finishing 10th in his first ever Formula 1 race. So to say that he doesn't hold any F1 qualities is definitely an understatement. After all, he and Bottas are driving for Kick Sauber, and we've seen how important that team has performed throughout the season, which is putting more pressure on the drivers to find performance out of a car that's not responding to the upgrades as the team has given up from the very start of the season when they had a lot of trouble with their pit stops. It's safe to say that Zhou has been arguably one of the poorest performing drivers on the grid in 2024, but nevertheless his numbers have been quite steady when it comes to other parameters rather than the qualifying head-to-heads with Bottas one in which he prevailed only once but lost 20 times. Joe had the fastest lap 12 times compared to Bottas, who had it 8 times. And in terms of finishing highest on the grid, Joe finished 11th once, while Bottas managed to finish 13th three times. Yes, Bottas is still the better performing driver without a doubt, because in races where both of them finish the race, he's finished ahead of Joe 12 times, while the Chinese driver managed to do so only 6. But when it comes to laps spent in the top 10 of the grid, Zhou has 36 of those, while Bottas has only 29. Therefore, knowing that Ferrari has ambitions to fight for the championship in 2025, and knowing that their hopes are still alive in the constructors' category for 2024, as they are only 36 points behind McLaren with three races to go, Zhou's duties will be very challenging. He would have to give the maximum of himself in order to make sure that the upgrades in the car will gel into one and will produce the optimal performance on the car. Leclerc himself stated that the goal for Ferrari is nothing less than the World Championship in 2025. 
and if you think about it, these two drivers will have a car that will be tested by Zhou in the simulator and on the track throughout some sessions. So if you're in the place of the Chinese driver, you'd expect how much they're going to ask from him in terms of specific details about the car. When talking about the further goals of Ferrari, Leclerc said, It's all about us, how well we're working as a team, and the job we're doing as a team to get the World Championship. I feel like we're working well. However, it's a relative sport, and it all depends on how well the others are doing too. And they're doing super well for now. So we've got a lot of hard work to do in the next few years, but I believe in the project. I have to believe in the project 100%, and I'm sure that Ferrari is the next team that will be world champions. We've just got to keep working. The same narrative was reflected by Vasseur as well, who believes that Ferrari as a team has come a long way, but they still have a lot of perspectives to work on, with no stone left unturned. Elaborating on how the team is going to end their title drought and finally win the first championship since 2007, Vasseur said, I don't think we've lost so many points on the strategy, but for sure you have frustration when you look at the complete season. We made mistakes as a team and had some issues, but I think that is true for everybody. If you look at that, everybody can say, if I didn't do this or this, and at the end with the kind of fight with three or four teams where it was this close, everybody can be world champion. But the most important thing is to avoid racing with if, because everybody can win races, but we need to focus on what we're doing to try and improve. It is a very good feeling for the team when we execute the strategy, the pit stop and everything well. It's like this, we have to finish the championship if we want to improve the classification. The situation for Joe is also going to be interesting from another point of view. You never know when you'll need to step in and do a full racing weekend now that we're talking about Ferrari, the team that has a customer in Haas. So if one of the four full-time drivers is not available for that particular weekend, Joe might be called in to do the work, and if he proves that he still has his sharpness and his ability to drive the car, and proves to the world that it was Sauber's fault that he and Bottas performed on the level they did, then we can easily conclude that he will be a contender for an F1 seat if some of the rookies fail to perform under pressure. Yes, the new generation of drivers is definitely one that we're putting a lot of hope into. But make no mistake, this is an environment filled with pressure, and if you're not performing well, then it would be extremely hard for the drivers to keep their seat. Not everybody has the luxury of Lance Stroll having his father own the team in which he drives, so this is all picturing a different perspective from the rest of the grid. If you're not good enough, you're out. That is also a massive minus for drivers that have lost their seat because of their poor performance, Joe included. But if we're to look at the performances of Sauber, then you cannot put the blame fully on the Chinese driver. With all of this in mind, do you think that Joe has been handed a lifeline that he cannot miss for the sake of his career? And more importantly, do you think that there will be a chance in which we will see Joe again on the F1 grid as a full-time driver? which is his ultimate goal despite this side mission that he will likely embark on. Let us know in the comments below and if you're interested in Hamilton's early exit from Mercedes, make sure to click on the video that's appearing on your screen right now.